The future of 3D printing. It is getting better and better every single day and I cannot wait to see where it takes us. And I wanna talk about where I think it's going. But first, I wanna talk about where it is right now and why it's just never been better to get started in this hobby. Let's take a look. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank and today we're talking about 3D printing or the evolution of it and where it's going. I have here next to me my original Creality CR10S 3D printer. I bought this thing four years ago, almost to the day actually, for about $500. And at the time, it was an amazing medium-sized hobby level desktop 3D printer. Now, through this video, we're only gonna be talking about hobby level 3D printers, the stuff you're gonna do in your house. I'm not worried about SLS, metal 3D printing, and things that are going on in this space and all of this crazy stuff. Honestly, I'm not even really worried about what Prusa is doing. They seem to be going in a more, I don't know, expensive consumer, high-end consumer level, not so much hobby level. So we're gonna leave them out of the equation for now. But this was a great printer. Unfortunately, back then though, I had to build it. Now, no, I didn't need to build it like an old Annette A8, and if you've ever built one of those, Godspeed, because wow, that is something else. But no, I still had to assemble it. I had to put the gantry on, put a bunch of plugs in, level the bed, tighten some nuts and bolts and all of that, level the bed again, because I messed it up, they didn't really know what I was doing, and then ask a bunch of silly questions on the forums, like, oh, are these support braces gonna do anything? No, not really. So it was a big learning experience, but that was the trade-off for getting a cheaper hobby level printer. You spent a little bit of money and put more time into the printer or you spent a lot of money and you got a turnkey printer. Now back in 2019, 2020, those turnkey printers could be anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000, the Ultimakers, the Flash Forges. And yeah, they worked great, but they were a little bit harder to work on and obviously you had to spend more money on them. Around the time that this printer came out, 2019, 2020, Creality had started a big race to the bottom. How cheap can we make our printers and get them into people's homes? And let's be honest, the Ender 3 won. Up until recently, I was still recommending the Ender 3 because it taught people how to work on their machines. This way when something went wrong, you understood that you had to level your bed and you understood the belt tension in the gantry. Yeah, it was cheap and bare bones, but if you built it right and understood it, it worked great. But after that crushing race to the bottom where you could get a 3D printer for $100, which is ridiculous, something else started to happen. People started to expect quality again because more and more people were funneling money into these companies. Huge companies like Creality that for a while were still running Kickstarters, which Still, I do not understand why they need to fund that. They make plenty of money. But people started complaining, actually having problems with their printers. And no, this isn't just a rag on Creality Fest. Plenty of companies have come and gone and dropped the ball significantly. They've just kind of been on the forefront of it. It was slow years of upgrading little things here and there and adding proprietary software and maybe making the bed a little bit better and maybe making the interface a little bit better. Oh, we put an enclosure around it. Oh, now it prints a little bit faster. It was just these slow, small upgrades just to keep the market appeased and then this happened. No, I'm not talking about the P1P in particular. I'm talking about bamboo as a whole and what they did to the market. Here comes a printer, the X1 Carbon, a turnkey printer for around $1,000 that was printing more reliably, better quality and faster than any printer around its price range. And it was turnkey. You could just unbox it, plug it in and boom, it, it worked. Now, the build plate size obviously was much smaller. Even my CR-10S here is much bigger than the X1 Carbon. However, it was that reliability. A company that nobody had heard of had just come out of the blue and dropped an absolute bomb into the market and people started to panic. But knowing that the X1 Carbon was still a little rich for some people's blood, they dropped the P1P, a stripped down version of the X1 that just gives you the speed and reliability without all the bells and whistles and enclosures and all that which honestly worked fine. Up until a few days ago, this printer was $700. Now it's $600 because they're celebrating their own little anniversary thing. And this is a $600 turnkey printer that has better quality and reliability than I have ever seen. But before we go on, no, this is not an absolute, oh my God, praise be Bamboo video. I had problems with this printer. Bamboo has some problems themselves with uh, like their customer service and stuff, but that's not for this video. If you wanna know more about the P1P itself and my full review and opinion on that, go check out that video. It's very informative. It is a great printer, but definitely watch that before you buy. 
This is more about the market and what Bamboo started to do to it. We were expecting that quality. We didn't want these little piddly upgrades over years and years and going backwards and their new printer just had a problem. Oh my God, there's like 50 different Crealities on the market and they all have different features and settings and I, I've just given up on them at this point. Up until a printer like this, I think a lot of companies were complacent with themselves and they understood that, well, if we weren't buying their printers, we weren't gonna get a printer. But here comes a company that just drops something like this and there was a big knee-jerk reaction in the entire hobby. I could sit here and do the snap thing, but that's kind of played out, so we're just gonna move that off. And I'm gonna show you guys the new Creality K1. This was Creality's response to high-speed turnkey printing that something like the P1P had started to provide. Now, at the time of this thing's release, it was $600 and the P1P was $700, and a lot of people like comparing them. However, the $100 difference did not make up for the lack of things that the K1 came with. I can print a full-size Mandalorian helmet on the P1P. This is the biggest helmet I can fit on the K1, and uh, it's not great. But again, it's about that disturbance in the market. Creality built this thing fast, so why didn't they do that sooner? Why did they have to wait for a company like Bamboo to come out and start you know, digging into their sales? They were pretty much capable of it for a while, but now the market demanded it. Not only did Creality take a shot at high-speed 3D printing, and honestly, it's not a bad machine, the P1P is just better. Elgu even threw their hat into the ring with the Neptune 4. Now, honestly, eh, this printer's kind of a miss. Uh, it's a good printer, don't get me wrong, it's just an upgraded Neptune 3. High-speed printing on a bed slinger, not ideal, but they were able to churn out more speed by adding this massive cooling duct fan thing, but it makes it sound like an apps, it just sounds like a jet engine in the other room. That seems to be one of the big trade-offs with high-speed printing. All three of these printers are very loud. They are not desktop printers you would just keep in the corner and just let go. My CR-10S is much quieter than all of these, though these can print, you know, 10 times faster. I am hoping that this was just a temporary stopgap for Elegoo to get something out there that could kind of keep up. And I am hoping they are trying to build an all-in-one turnkey printer because, hey, that's what people want. And if Elegoo can turn something like that out with the quality they've been providing in the past year, this, uh, this K1 can go away. So we'll see what happens. Um, near miss Elegoo. You're getting there though. Keep it up. But guys, like this is it. This is the direction the hobby is taking. There is talks that Bamboo is in works for a larger Core XY 3D printer. Fast high speed printing just like a Voron but a bigger format and the Creality K1 Max. After taking this thing apart and dissecting it, yes, it is much more simply built than the P1P and the X1 Carbon. These things are a nightmare to work on. I will not lie to anybody about that. The K1 is a much simpler build, which means it's going to be much easier to upscale. I imagine the K1 Max is literally going to be this exact frame, just bulked up a little bit, which is totally fine. Supposedly, it's going to be 300 cubed. That's great. My CR10 down there is 300, 300 by 400, and I never really used Use the maximum height so a high speed printer that 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 is that size Creality you need to get that out ASAP and just fix your bed adhesion problem and this thing would be this thing would be so good but we're finally getting there guys the companies aren't really nickel and diming us anymore because if somebody can put out a printer like this and then another company can respond well the cat's out of the bag. This is what we need to start expecting now. And I think it's only going to continue from there. We're gonna start getting faster and faster FDM 3D printing, but I do believe there is going to be an upper limit on that speed. You can only melt plastic so fast until it just becomes unfeasible, but we're gonna see where that goes. However, we're gonna start talking more about the sizes, the build volumes, being able to print different, more exotic materials, the control features, the Wi-Fi, the wireless printing. These printers just have that now, and that would have been unheard of three or four years ago. Bed adhesion problems aside, the K1 just worked out of box. I didn't have to level it. It booted up fine. The user interface is much better than the Bamboo's weird little uh, clicky screen over here. And that's great. This means they're actually listening and paying attention. Even if they are just trying to rip off the competition, hey, we're benefiting from it. And now with printers just coming with those features, more money is being funneled into the companies that are providing printers with those features. Now they can make even more printers with even more features, and it's just this feedback loop. No, I still think people are gonna continue to build Vorons for quite a while and just make these ridiculously fast printing machines, but the fact that people can do that means that companies like this can do that, and especially with the right amount of money, I think we're gonna see actual, real, incredible high-speed 3D printing within the next five years. I mean, stuff that just looks like it's sped up footage, but it's not.
Obviously, I think it goes without saying, every day is the best day to get into this hobby. Absolutely. It's not like printers were better a year ago or something. No, it's amazing to get into the hobby now and it's only getting better. Right now, I still absolutely stand with what I said in my P1P video. This is the best printer you can get for this price point and now it's only $600. Like, that's pretty ridiculous. There's a new chapter opening in this hobby, guys, and I am super excited to be around for it. Um, and I really just wanted to get this video out there to kind of talk to a lot of you because I know a lot of you don't really know what's going on with printers like this, my opinions on them or that type of stuff. So I figured, hey, why not make a video, chat about it for a little bit and just get this embedded on my channel forever. And then in a year or so, I can look back at it and just, I don't know, see how far they've come. But I also wanna know what you guys think about this. Leave some comments down below about where you think the hobby is going or what you wanna see in the next year or five years. Obviously we're, you know, decades and probably a couple millennia away from something like a replicator from Star Trek, but like this is pretty cool stuff and it's not slowing down. It's, it's great, I love it and I love talking about it. So leave some comments so I can please talk about it more with you guys. But I think that's gonna be a wrap for this video guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.